Hey Cheryl, let's make one of the most popular restaurant appetizers out there. Buffalo chicken wings. No, crab cakes. Okay, that's good All too. Right? Okay, let's get started. Uh, we have all the ingredients. You're gonna make the mix and you're gonna make the things because I think you'll remember it better that way, okay? Okay. So let's start with the crab. Go ahead and put it in the bowl. Now Cheryl's putting in here lump crab meat and these are, this is the crab meat from Blue Crabs out of the Chesapeake Bay area. Mm. Now when you're in the store, you're gonna see back fin, lump, and jumbo lump. We're using lump here. Jumbo lump is more expensive. Back fin is a little bit less expensive. Um, I like to sort of stay in the middle ground, especially because we're going to be breaking this up and making the crab cakes. Now, the people in the Chesapeake Bay area are very, very fond of their crab cakes. And what we're going to try to do here is sort of keep it uh, in the tradition of how they would do it in the region. So we've got the, the crab meat in here. And Cheryl, you can go ahead and mix that. She put a little bit of mayonnaise, right? Mm -hmm. You got some Worcestershire, Old Bay, Coleman's dry mustard. Uh, you put some salt, pepper, and then did you put the Tabasco? Oh, no, you do that. Did you put the salt and pepper? Yes. Okay. Did now, I put enough mayonnaise? No, you need to put all of it. Oh. She also put some uh, breadcrumbs in here. What's important is she's, she's actually done. What happens? <laughs> you're like done. I'm serious. Totally serious. <laughs> okay, okay. So that means stop. Okay, okay. All right. Like stop. Okay, okay. And the reason why she's stopping is because one of the things that people do often is they'll buy a lump meat, which is expensive, and then they'll mix it to death and then it breaks the whole thing up. Mm. A good crab cake has pieces of, nice pieces oh. of crab in there. And the other thing is we didn't put a ton of things in there because we really want to focus on the sweetness of the crab. Okay. Okay, so now you make a little uh, sort of golf ball pieces and we're gonna put it in. You, with my hands? Yeah, you with can. With my hands? Yeah, you wash them, right? Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, we're gonna put this in panko, so and I like panko because it's, yeah, it's a Japanese breadcrumb. It's light. Uh, if you want, you can use regular breadcrumbs, but uh, in Hawaii here, we like we like the panko. So, and in restaurants, actually, they do a lot. So she's gonna put golf ball sizes in here, and while she's doing that, you keep going. I'm gonna sort of roll the uh, the crab cake in the panko, and then what we do is I'll pick them up like this and just, just lightly shape them into a cake. One of the things that you don't want to do is really manhandle them, press them down because the key to a good crab cake is that they're light, they're not dense, and all the meat's not all broken up. So that's pretty much it on the crab cakes here. A couple things to keep in mind when you're making crab cakes. If you want, if you're gonna do a lot of them, you're gonna get together, I'd make a bunch of them. You can go ahead and freeze them. Ooh, freeze um, another them. thing that works great is after these are done, even if I wasn't going to freeze them, I would put them in the refrigerator for a little while because we've been working with them, the temperature's changing. Putting them in the refrigerator is going to help firm them up a little bit because then once we take them out, which we're going to pan fry next, and when we pan fry them, if they're too sort of room temperature, they may not hold together, they may fall apart. So the goal is to have a crab cake that has just enough to keep it together, mm -hmm. but when you eat it, it's super tender and it's really, really nice big pieces of crab in there. Mm. All right, okay. we're gonna come back, we're gonna fry some up and we'll have it with remoulade. Ooh, cool? sounds great. All right. So we formed them into patties and now we're frying them. Uh, when you get it ready to fry them, you wanna have a nice uh, thick gauge pan and I put enough, I'm using canola oil. You wanna, pan, we're pan frying these, so the difference between pan frying and sauteing this pan frying is a little bit more oil. I'm gonna put, I'm looking at maybe an eighth of an inch of oil in the bottom, and it's medium high heat as opposed to saute, which is like very high heat, okay? And what I'm trying to do is just very evenly brown them on the bottom. Once they brown nicely, I'm gonna flip them over, brown the other side, and then I'm gonna put them in here just to, like, to drain the oil off of them. So it's about how many minutes on each side? You know, probably a minute and a half to two minutes. So you're looking for a good, Probably four, four, four minutes, minutes total. Yeah. So the ones that I put in first, I'm getting ready to turn them over, and you're re you're getting ready to see the magic here. Mm. What do you think? Looks good. And okay. you're using a fork to turn it over, but I could use a spatula. You could use a spatula. Um, or tongs. Tongs, I would shy away from them. The reason why is remember we're trying to make these very mm. delicate, right? Mm. So mm -hmm. if you could go in there with the oh, tongue, okay. Okay. you're gonna end up with uh, okay. crab salad. You know? <laughs> so I'm gonna flip mm. this over. And see that the 
one of the things that's really you may not have thought about is when you're cooking, cooking is not just about um, visual, it's also about sound and hearing. And what are you <laughs> and laughing? I never thought of that. Well, you can tell that this that the oil is too hot if you put your crab cakes in and it goes <laughs> because it's too hot. And what, what does it sound like to you right now? What do you hear? Sounds like a, a river. It does really well. It's <laughs> soothing, right? No, but it's moderate. It's it's slowly cooking, right? So this it doesn't sound like a very aggressive uh, splashing and splattering. It's because we're slowly cooking these. We're letting them cook through and giving them enough time to brown. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, cool. So. So you use all your senses. All when your you cook. exactly. So I'm gonna take this. This one looks good. I'm gonna pull this on the side. I'm gonna go ahead and turn these over. See how they're kind of nice and golden brown now. The thing is, you gotta also. Cooking is also about guidelines and sort of touch. Mm -hmm. I turn these over when they're ready to be turned over. I don't say one minute, 30 seconds, turn over. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you gotta, you work with it. You keep an eye on it. This is ready to go. This one is ready to go. Now these I just flipped, right? So we're gonna let them go for one minute and 30 seconds and then we're gonna take them out and then uh, we'll come back and we'll have them with some uh, sauce and stuff like that. Mm. Cool. Cool. All right. So we're plating these up and we've got some lemon. She's putting a little bit of remoulade in there, which is like French tartar sauce. Mm. Um, you can make these with your own special tartar sauce recipe. Sometimes you can, people do it with guacamole and stuff. So have fun, mm -hmm. enjoy them. They're about the crab and Cheryl's gonna go for the bite and... Mm. I'm impressed. There you have it. Impressive <laughs> crab cakes with sauce remoulade. For more recipes like this, visit us at foodan.com.